Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dr. Janine Show. I'm so happy to have you all here today. We have a great show planned for today. And guess what we're going to be talking about? We're talking about fat loss. And we are revisiting leptin resistance, your hormonal weight gain, what that has to do with getting that fat off. And I've got my leptin resistance tip. So I know a lot of you have been waiting about that. If you don't know what leptin resistance is, I'm going to break it down for you. And we'll do a little review for those, you know, professionals out there who know all about leptin resistance. We're also going to be coming back to the beauty set here. We're doing some face taping. And today we're talking about the crow's feet. So if you have, you know, any of those little fine lines and wrinkles that you're worried about, of course, we don't worry about them here at the Dr. Janine Show because we're all beautiful, but it's okay. I've got a great natural technique with that face tape and we're going to be coming back here and talking about that. We're also talking about how to maximize that fat burn especially in the fall. So in this season now when the temperatures are getting colder we want to maximize that fat burning and I've got tips for that very specifically. We're also going to be going and doing a foot detox. I'm going to share my foot detox recipe with you which is a phenomenal to pull and draw those toxins out through the feet which is amazing. And and I'm going to show you how I vortex my water. So structuring your water in terms of proper hydration is really important. We'll also revisit that Soleil water. If you don't know what that is, you got to stay tuned. It's going to be so much fun. So please say hello if you're here today. If you're here for the first time, Marjan, hello, nice to see you. Please put a one in the comments and just say hello. It's so great to see you. Hello, Jerry. Good morning. It's great to have you here again. Thank you for tuning in. Maddie from California, please let me know where everyone is from, which is amazing. Yvonne, good morning. Beebees, hello. Nice to see you. I'm glad that you're here for the show. Thank you for sharing today's live with all your friends. Hey, hey, if you can share it with 10 people right now, that would be fantastic. Remember, this is very live and interactive. So we do have our quiz questions throughout the show as well, which is always so much fun. You have the ability to win a prize. I'm going to also announce last week's winner. So stay tuned for that. And hello, Helen, nice to see you. It's good to see you and thank you for being here. And Melody's Universe from Uganda, nice to see you. Good morning, good morning. And in South Africa, Lee, nice to see you. People from all over the world. Janine, another Janine, hello, nice to see you. From Cape Town, South Africa, hello, hello. Thank you for joining the show. And Maddie, again from California, great to see you again. And Tina from Canada, well, this is going to be a fun show. Is everybody ready? Yes, we're ready. And if you're here for the first time, please put a one in the comments. Great to have you here. And thank you to everybody who is sharing today's live. And Ave is in Costa Rica. Hello, nice to see you. Okay, let's do a little review. Now, what is leptin resistance? And why is this so important when we're talking about fat loss and getting that fat off the body? Okay, so leptin is a hormone that is secreted by our fat cells. So our fat cells secrete leptin. Okay, and that signaling is supposed to come to the brain and tell the brain that, hey, we've got enough body fat here, there's no need to go and seek for more food, let's, you know, use our metabolism to burn off and utilize that body fat that we do have to keep us alive. That's what proper leptin signaling is all about. However, when we have a problem with leptin resistance, what's happening is that that fat cell, yes, is secreting that leptin signal, but now things can mess up those receptors. So the receptors are not necessarily getting that right signaling. That's something that we'll talk about today, which I haven't mentioned before, as to what is one of those things that can really mess up this signaling. One of them is inflammation, which I have mentioned before. That inflammation, there's the secretion of CRP. That's one of the blood tests that can be done for leptin resistance. That highly sensitive CRP gives now that inflammatory signal is happening. And guess what? The brain no longer is getting that proper signaling that the leptin level is there. So what does the brain do? The brain says, hey, we don't have enough body fat. Go and get more food. And that's what your brain is telling you to do. So you're hungry all the time. You're looking for more carbohydrates, things that'll put more body fat on you. And that is why it's so difficult. If you don't fix that leptin resistance, this is so difficult and that's why you can't lose that weight. So we're talking about hormonal fat loss today. It's so great to have you all here. I know I've got your attention now, but more importantly, I've got my tips coming, how to maximize this fat burn, especially in the fall. So as the seasons are changing, especially here in Canada, if you live in you know, different parts of the world where it is starting to get a little bit cooler, we're gonna talk about that. 
But let's first talk about my tips to fix that leptin resistance. And I've got nine of them, I believe, today. Is it nine? I do have nine. And number eight is going to be your very least favorite. I am guarantee it, OK? But let's go through the nine that we've got, the leptin resistance tips and what we can do to fix that leptin resistance. So tip number one is cold exposure. I have more tips on that coming up on how to do that cold exposure. And no, you don't have to jump into an ice cold freezing lake, OK? So that's good. OK, tip number two, don't eat before bed. One of those things that will mess up that leptin signaling in your leptin receptors is having too high a blood glucose levels. And if you are actually secreting your insulin, you have to be in a low insulin state to have that proper leptin signaling. So you don't want to eat before bed. That's really important. Tip number three, follow Mother Nature's prescription. What does this mean? If you're new to my content, this is all about getting outside, into nature, being up when the sun is rising or as close to sunrise as possible, making sure you're getting that natural sunlight in your eyes, taking your shoes off, getting grounded. That is Mother Nature's prescription. Really important for your leptin signaling. Tip number four, fasting. So if you're going to be fasting and doing intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting, you probably don't want to skip your breakfast. This is the only thing. You need to have a good, healthy breakfast to set your circadian rhythms and your leptin signaling for the day. So if you are doing intermittent fasting, you're fasting your dinner. You're not fasting your first meal of the day. That's really important. And keeping very hydrated is key here as well. And that's why we will be visiting our Soleil water today. We're going to come back to it. I'm going to tell you what that's all about. Because if you are doing that intermittent fasting to get you through that fast, you want to stay properly hydrated and that's why we're going to talk about my Soleil water when we go over into the kitchen in just a few minutes, okay? So that's really important. Okay, tip number five, no snacking. You don't want to be always spiking your blood glucose levels. That will lead to insulin resistance, but it also is the leptin resistance that usually happens first, okay? So that's really important. Tip number six, EGCG. So where does that come from? That comes from green tea. Now green tea is phenomenal because it helps to balance our triglycerides and triglycerides can prevent the transport of that leptin to get into the brain. And this is important because to cross that blood brain barrier, you have to have balanced triglycerides. If they're too high, you are not going to have that proper leptin signaling and now you've got that leptin resistance. So that's really important. And this is EGCG. You can take it in extracts. It's one of the things that I actually take every day as part of my fat burning process. So there's a supplement that I take, of course, that is a high concentration of that EGCG from the green tea. I, gr I drink green tea as well, which is amazing. But it is in a number of my supplements that I do take. But in the fat burning supplement, that's something that I do. OK, tip number seven. Remember eight, you're not going to like. But we're getting there. Get a good night's sleep. So tip number seven, I mean, that goes without saying your leptin secretion is highest when you're sleeping. So a few hours after you do fall asleep, that's really important for that proper reception of that leptin into the leptin receptor when you're sleeping. So getting a good night's sleep is important. Okay, number eight, I told you you're not going to like this one. Cut out the sugar. Yeah, you got to cut out, especially the fructose. Now we will be talking about fructose and the foods that are high in fructose today, but that fructose will really mess up. They'll drive up your triglycerides and make that leptin resistance worse. Also, adding on to especially that belly fat. So you don't want to have too much fruits and things, and we're going to talk about that. And number nine, that mind-body connection. So as much as this is okay, you're looking at this list and you're like, that's a lot to undertake just to get that extra fat off. Well, it is all about consistency. So don't give up on yourself. Even if you undertake you know, one or two of the, or three of these tips, in the next few weeks, you will see a dramatic difference in your circadian rhythms, as well as in your ability to burn off that extra fat. Okay, who is loving this? Thank you for tuning in today. It's so great to see you all here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's nice to have you here. And I know Legion's dad, fructose is everywhere. I know that. And it's hard to, especially the high fructose corn syrup. I mean, that's number one. We talk about fruits and things, but this is the most, you know, 
scary thing is when it is synthetically made. So please share today's live. Please share with 10 people right now if you can hit that share button. It's so fantastic. We hit some milestones last week and in the previous week's shows as well with our shares and our likes and our hearts and all of those things. So it makes it more fun for me as well when we get all of those hit those milestones. And yes, we're working on getting the gong for when we mentioned the gong show last week. That was so fun. Okay, we're working on that. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. It's so great to have you all here. Thank you for tuning in today. Now let's talk about how do we maximize that fat burning, especially in the fall time. Now we will be coming back if you see my friend Ricky. If you've not yet met Ricky, Ricky's here. Ricky's going to help us and we're going to be talking about the best direction to be sleeping in and we're revisiting that as well. We talked about position to sleep in for optimized brain drain last week if you missed that show, but today we're going to talk about which direction should you be sleeping in to optimize your sleep to help with that fat loss as well. Because remember, on our list of leptin resistance tips, all about that fat loss, it's really important that we get that good night's sleep for that proper leptin signaling. Okay, are we ready? Let's talk about maximizing our fat burn, especially in the fall. And I want you to embrace the cold. So if you live in a temperate climate, away from the equator, which I know some of you don't because some of you do live close to the equator from what I've seen. Hello, hello, it's so great to have you here. But if the seasons are changing, when you go into the cooler months, this is important to maximize that fat burn when the temperature is getting colder. So you need to embrace that cold. So the first tip is at first light, you wanna go outside. When the sun is rising, that's really important. Try to go without your jacket, even if it's just for 30 seconds. A minute two minutes go without your jacket don't bundle all up you want to get cold just like the natural animals and the mammals would do out in the forest or wherever you are they they don't put on an extra coat do they so you got to think about that because we are mammals we want to again embrace and let our body adapt to those colder temperatures so you're going to go outside no jacket no shoes as well so be brave enough no shoes as well okay just for that grounding first thing in the morning okay tip number two on your way to work, on your way to school, open the car window. So if you drive, you're gonna open up that car window. It's another great way just to get a bit of cool air going and of course don't have your jacket on. Okay, tip number three is open your kitchen window. If it, some of the couple windows in your home, especially first thing in the morning, get a little bit of that cold draft on your body. It does wonders. Not only does it wake you up, but it helps with your leptin signaling and your fat burn as well. And number four, Drink your tea outside. So this is what I like to do. Even on the coldest wintry day, I'll make my hot cup of tea and just go outside on my front porch. And yes, it's cold, it's cold, but that hot cup of tea is like so soothing and warming that you can do it. And it's amazing how your body will start to adapt to that colder temperature and help with your leptin signaling and with that fat burn. Okay, so everybody love that, you got it. So I want you to screenshot that if you have the ability to screenshot that really quickly so that you've got it. And then we're gonna be moving to quiz question number one. So we have a number of quiz questions today. You have the ability to win a prize. And and this week we are playing for the fat factors. So this is from our great sponsors at VitaTree. We thank them for supporting the show, making everything possible here at the Dr. Janine Show. So yay to our sponsors. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is what you're playing for. Now I will be mentioning last week's winner in just a second, but let's go to quick question number one. Okay, I hope everybody is paying attention. Are we ready? Here we go. True or false? Do we have it? There we go, true or false. Leptin is a hormone that is secreted by fat cells. Leptin is a hormone that is secreted by fat cells. Okay, you've got 30 seconds up on the clock. Do your best and let's go. Here we go. Put your answers in, just, just try your best. Good participation, everyone. Good job, good job. All right, awesome, awesome. Get your answers in. You got about 10 seconds left. Leptin is a hormone secreted by our fat cells, and the answer is... All right, everybody got their answers in? Good job, everyone. The answer is true, yes. So I think I saw mostly correct answers. Good job, everyone. Okay, you've got a few more opportunities to 
play the quiz question, so don't go anywhere. Thank you for sharing today's live, and thanks for all my new followers as well. I mean, every time we come live, there are so many new followers that join the show, and thank you for tuning in today. I am Dr. Janine. If you're here for the first time, please put a one in the comments, naturopathic doctor, and I hope that you're enjoying you know, all of my content. So we put out so much content every week, different subjects, all about natural medicine. It's so great to have you all here today. Okay, I'm glad that you caught the live. All right, are we ready? Here we go. Let's talk now about our winner from last week. So last week's winner, and this was the winner of our Vita Detox. So congratulations to Chatal. Yay, congratulations. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you for participating in our quiz section last week. It was so great to have you here, and you're our lucky winner. Please make sure that you are following Team Dr. J9. So if you are a lucky winner, that we can reach out to you and share your prize. Yay, fireworks. All right, good job, Chatal. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about now avoiding a certain thing to maximize your fat burning, especially in the fall time. Now, we will be talking about maintaining your proper hydration. This is really important to properly hydrate your cells and some of the benefits of that Soleil water. So that is coming up. And don't forget, we're going into the beauty set as well today. We're talking about the crow's feet. So we're going to be doing some face taping. I know a lot of you tune in just for that, talking about that face taping. And we're going to be doing that today as well. Okay, now, we will now talk about maximizing that fat burn in the fall and how can we do that? Well, there's something to avoid in our diets and unfortunately, it's the fructose. So whether it's high fructose corn syrup, it could also be things like, you know, the our fruits and I'm going to go through some of the fruits that are high unfortunately in that fructose, but this is all about that leptin signaling. So remember, with that leptin signaling, what fructose does, unfortunately, is that it alters the leptin transport at the blood-brain barrier. So now that leptin signaling, and this is part of that resistance, because of that high fructose and high triglycerides, now that leptin signaling is not happening properly. That leptin's not getting into the hypothalamus of the brain, and that's how we get that fat. And let me go back to Mr. Fat really quickly. That's how we get that fat gain. So we want to burn off and we're targeting this fat loss where well, we have to maximize our leptin signaling. So by having too much fructose, this is a problem. One of the indications in blood work, if you have a high uric acid, that's an indication that potentially you are not metabolizing your fructose properly. And that often goes hand in hand with anybody who's had gout before. So if that's something that you've suffered with and you've got to really watch your fructose, your sugar intake, but quite likely you may have a fat issue as well that you have gained some weight. So this is really important. And let's now talk a little bit about some of you know those foods that could be high in that fructose. So let's look at this really quickly. And here we go, thank you. Let's look at foods high in fructose. So number one, our fruits. So as much as they are healthy foods, we know that things like apples are high in fructose, pears, grapes, raisins, blueberries even have that fruit sugar, the fructose, which is not great for our liver health, but can also mess up our leptin reception. And that can lead to that fat gain that, of course, we don't necessarily need. So a little bit in the summertime, this way, eating a local seasonal diet in the summertime when these fruits are available, that's a good thing to do. Just like the animals, they fatten up a little bit in the summertime to get them through the cold winter. The same is true for humans. So indulging a little bit in the summertime when these things are available to us, sure, no problem. You don't want to overdo it. However, too much is not a good thing. And number two on the list is a problem. So the fruit juices is a concentrated fructose. This is, I don't drink juice any longer. Why? Because it's too high in fructose. It doesn't have the fiber from the fruit or vegetable itself to actually balance out the blood glucose levels. So that's one thing to be aware of. I don't like fruit juices. Okay, number three, honey. So here's another thing, if you're trying to lose that weight, you're trying to lose that fat, especially that belly fat, in moderation. And honey, we know, is available to us all year round. It is a healthy food. It helps with the allergies. It's great. I love honey, but at the same time, and I've got my honey here, thank you. Honey is fantastic. Love it, love it, love it. How many people love honey? Is there a honey emoji? I don't know. If, if you can find the honey emoji, please put it in the, in the comments, because I love, I think there is one, yes. Um, 
This, and there's so many questions, so please save your questions. Thanks for all the follows, I see that, and oh my goodness, so many of you sh have been sharing. So thank you for the shares, guys. It's amazing to have you all here and sharing as well, and thanks for all the new follows. So yes, honey is great, but too much is not so good. Do I see the honey pots? Yes, I do. Love it, love it, Rita. Hello, yes, I see the honey. Awesome, awesome. And Beatrice, and Rosemary, and Mike, and Gracie, and Moni, and Michelle, and Clara, everybody, and Raul. Raul San Miguel, Lien, hello, you all, and you, and uh, Shveta, I think that's how you say it, I'm not sure. Um, you love Manuka honey, love it, love it, love it, yes. Melody's Universe, yeah, okay, we have so many honey lovers, love it as well, of course, which is amazing. Now, another one on the list that is high in fructose, agave. So again, in moderation, especially when you're fixing your leptin resistant, and especially if you want to lose that fat, you're really using these in moderation or not at all until you get your weight under control. Number five, molasses, again, high in fructose. Number six on the list is maple syrup. So as much as I love my maple syrup as well, and again, you're not drinking gallons of this stuff. You're using maybe just a little bit on your pancakes or whatever, but you've got to use that in moderation if you're trying for that fat loss and fixing your leptin resistance. As well as number seven, dates. Again, high in that fructose. And number eight, which is probably the worst, is white and brown sugar when it's been highly refined. It is still fructose. 45 to 50% of it is still fructose, okay? So there we go. Now we will be doing the foot detox bath recipe. I don't want you to go anywhere. That's going to be amazing. You're going to love that for pulling those toxins out of our body, which is so important. That's important for fat loss as well. Now we will talk a little bit about cold thermogenesis and why that's important. We have a couple more quiz questions coming as well, which is always so much fun. Okay, so thank you for sharing and liking. So all those hearts that come in that I sometimes see them all and I sometimes don't see them all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all those gifts that happen as well throughout the shows. I totally appreciate it. So kind to have you and to share and that you're all here today. And thank you, thank you for tuning in. Okay, now let's talk about cold thermogenesis. So using the cold to your advantage and there's some great things about cold thermogenesis that actually help in terms of our vagus nerve. It helps to relax us, which is great for stress, so those cold showers. Now there's something called cold shock proteins. There's also heat shock proteins for going in the saunas and things, but those cold shock proteins are a group of stress proteins that can be activated by cold exposure. And a little bit cooler than normal, body temperature is all you need to do to activate these cold shock proteins. It's a little bit different because the heat shock proteins Sitting in a sauna, you actually need to go into heat stress, so it has to be a higher temperature, a higher variation from body temperature to activate heat shock proteins, but the great thing about cold shock proteins is that you don't have to get that that cold to activate them, which is amazing. And this is helping your leptin receptors, helping with that fat loss, which is so important. And as your body is creating more heat to keep you warm because you've ac activated those cold shock proteins, that's where you're burning those calories, that's where you're burning that fat, which is amazing. So let's talk a little bit now about how do we do that cold thermogenesis. So how do we practice cold exposure? And I've got some tips coming up as well. So one of them is, and some more quiz questions as well. So all you have to do now is the face dunk. So the face dunk is one of those things that you just get a bowl of, for instance, I could get a bowl a little bit bigger than this, fill it with some cold water, and some ice cubes and you just dunk your face in it, hold your breath for as long as possible. I do have a video on that so you can check out the full protocol and how to do that. Check that out and then you're gonna come up for air and then you go back down. That's great for your vagus nerve as well. So if you have a lot of stress and anxiety, that's gonna help you as well. Okay, so that face dunk, one way to practice your cold exposure. Number two, a cold shower. So the cold shower, you're gonna work your way up to getting colder and colder, so ideally, three minutes, and this is a challenge. I think I've only ever gotten as far as two and a half minutes in the cold shower. Yeah. Three minutes at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. That's a cold shower, um, but great for that cold exposure. But you're going to work your way up to that, even just 30 seconds. Most times I'm just doing 30 seconds. I put it to as cold as it'll go and <laughs> shiver my way through, um, but that's a great way to do your cold exposure. Okay, short periods of being outside without your jacket, like we talked about a few moments ago. If you're just tuning in now, that's a great way to do your cold exposure. It helps to stimulate that fat loss as well. And you can also do number four, a cold bath. 
So at 70 degrees, which is not super, super cold, only about five minutes in a cooler bath, let's call it that, that's a great thing that you can do, okay? And number five is an actual ice bath. So thank you for tuning in, whoever's here today right now. Please cl <laughs> click that share button. Share with at least 10 people right now. Let's bring more people to the party right now. We're talking about full disclosure and the benefits. And we do have a quick question coming up. So that ice bath, again, is something that you can do. Work your way up to the ice bath and actually dumping the ice into your bath. But again, at 70 degrees, that's like filling up your bathtub with cold water, just letting it sit, or even just a regular bath. You know, if you've got the kids or whatever, I don't know if you want to share bath water, but I'm just saying, if you bathe the kids and you don't mind jumping in, I mean, how dirty could they actually be? Well, they could be. Um, and just let your bath water cool down and then you jump in, you know, after they've gone to bed for your, for your cold bath. It's not an ice bath at that point, but a cold bath. That'll do wonders for your leptin signaling as well. Okay, we're at quiz question number two already. So if you're just tuning in, thank you for tuning in today. It's so great to have you all here. This is quiz question number two. You have the ability to win a prize today. Sorry, I'm just going to pop over here really quickly. We are playing for the Fat Factors from our great sponsors at VitaTree. We thank them for making today's show possible and every show as well and all the content, of course, that we share here on Dr. Janine's channels. Okay, are we ready? I hope everybody was paying attention. Here's quiz question number two. This is a fill in the blank. Okay, blank is a type of sugar that should be avoided in fall to help with leptin signaling and fat loss. Okay, fill in the blank. You've got 30 seconds. You guys are so fast. Oh my goodness, the answers are already coming in. Let's go, let's go. Get your answers in. Okay, awesome, awesome. I see those answers coming in. Everybody's so wise. We are going to be coming to the foot detox bath in just a moment, and we're also going to be doing face taping, so that is coming up. Thank you for sharing today's live. Thank you. Oh, smiling and contagious. Love, thank you. That's such a sweet comment. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for all the hearts as well. All right, did everybody get their answers in? We're out of time. All right, the answer is, of course, Fructose, yes, so too much fructose, not great for me to look at. And if you want me to call up some of those slides again, I can do that with a list of all the high fructose foods. We will do that if you want, so just stick around. And we have some question and answer time coming up as well. Okay, so I want to say thank you to all of my super fans. So every week we have new people and people that have been here for a while that actually donate to the channel, which makes this all possible for me to come and speak to you so nicely every week. So we thank all of our super fans. Thank you so much for all of your support. I truly, truly am grateful for everyone who comes in and tunes in every week but also to the super fans who actually donate to the channel. It is so, so generous of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about our sleep direction. Now remember, sleep is so important in terms of our leptin signaling. Our leptin is secreted for our fat loss, our thyroid hormones, when we sleep, and our proper melatonin levels are important for that fat loss as well. So last week we talked a little bit about the position in which we should sleep, and we talked about elevating the head, so if you missed that, you can reference that again. But, and we will be going to the beauty set, I'm just being reminded, we're going to the beauty set in just a few moments to talk about face taping for those crow's feet, so that's coming up. Okay, so last week we talked about elevating the head, this helps with brain drain, so this is really important for brain detoxification as we're sleeping, helps with our melatonin, helps with you know getting into that deep sleep, which is important, so elevating the head is one thing. But did you know that sleeping in the proper direction has an effect on your quality of sleep as well? And because we are electromagnetic, there is electromagnetism in the Earth as well, which is so important, and we have our North and South Poles. So actually putting your head facing south is the optimal way. So having your, fa your head facing south, your feet towards the north, is what has found to be the optimal way to be able to maximize your sleep. Okay, so this is really interesting. And I think back, I think intuitively a lot of us know this. And I know if you're trying to configure like how your room and your, how your bed is set up in your room right now. And I'm not saying you have to make drastic changes. Now, if you're not well, maybe you need to lose some weight. Maybe your melatonin is not great. Your sleep is not great. 
you may want to think about moving the position of your bed in your home. But even as a kid, I know that in you know my bedroom, my bed was not optimized and I couldn't always sleep. So all I would do was flip my head and put my head at the other end of my bed and I could sleep. And sure enough, thinking back, I knew the direction of my house that was putting my head to the south what made me sleep. So something to think about. I want you to sort of figure that out for your own home or your own bed wherever you sleep and see if you can maximize your sleep by having your head to the south. Everybody loving this information? Thumbs up please in the comments if you're loving that. If you And if you actually do sleep with the, put an S in the comments if your head is to the south, if you know that that's something that you're already doing. Of course we can tie this into traditional Chinese medicine and feng shui and all of that as well. I won't go there. Thank you for sharing today's live. Oh my goodness. So many people are sharing and thanks for all my new followers as well. I see all those hearts coming in. All right, awesome, awesome. Okay, we're going to the kitchen. I'm going to show you how to vortex water. Now I hinted at it a little bit last week. Structuring your water is really important for proper hydration but to give you more energy and we're going to talk about some of the benefits as well of that Soleil water. So this is something that we made last week. We're going to come to the recipe as well. I'm going to revisit that but basically having proper water to properly hydrate you. This is really important if you're doing any type of fasting, if you're trying to lose weight, you need a bit of that salt and the minerals that come in that salt to help with your entire hydration, okay? So all you're gonna do with your Soleil water or even if it's in just in your drinking glass, and I do this depending on you know the size of my glass and I'm gonna do it in the, my Soleil water. So we've made the Soleil water. We're gonna come to the recipe in just a second. So if you missed it, we can show you that. And all you're gonna do is swirl it. So I just go like this in my jar and there's a little bit of sediment of the salt in the bottom. And hopefully we're gonna be able to see that on the camera once I get this going. So for about 30 seconds, I just go clockwise and I swirl the water. And this is going to help to now be able to structure that water. Okay, can we see it on the camera, can you see how it's swirling around? There we go, so that is helping to structure that water. So that's really important. And now with that Soleil water, just as a recap, all you're doing every time you drink, so imagine I've already been drinking uh, my glass of water because I like to hydrate. Um, all you're gonna do is add a teaspoon of your Soleil water to your drinking water every time you drink. There you go, okay? bottoms up and you shouldn't really be able to taste it at that concentration for the Soleil water which I'm showing you that now for the recipe you shouldn't really be able to taste the salt I experiment sometimes and like see okay how far can I push it and on the weekend I put like far too much into my drinking water I'm like it was so salty but at the same time that has a detox effect okay if that's what you're looking for so here we go the Soleil water this is all you're gonna do is put two teaspoons of your sea salt, a good quality salt, and I do have other videos coming up on that. I, we will be posting on that, so stay tuned for that. And into, the, this is a liter of water in my mason jar. That's all you need, and you're just gonna take a teaspoon of that every time you drink, okay? So that is great. Now, what are some of the benefits of the Soleil water? Let's talk about that. So, number one, it helps with muscle function and recovery. This is why a lot of, you know, those electrolyte drinks, of course, they have salt added into them to help with that muscle recovery. So I find that this really helps in terms of, you know, my muscle recovery after workouts and things. Really important, especially for my hot yoga class. I can't go without the salt. I mean, it's a crazy and cramping and things that can happen if you don't have enough of that proper salt from your Soleil water. Okay, number two helps with proper digestion. Can help if you are constipated, can help to move things along because of those extra minerals as well that are in here. Also helps with detox and helps to balance the blood pH in your body, which is amazing. And it also helps to balance blood sugar levels. So that is incredible. And here we go, helps with bone health. So all of those extra minerals, of course, in the salt are gonna help with that proper, you know, making sure that that calcium is getting into the bones, as well as boosts your energy levels. People ask me, how do you have so much energy? Well, maybe it's the Soleil water. It's a lot of things, I'm sure. But yeah, that helps with your energy as well. Number seven, antihistamine effects as well. So if you are an allergy, 
suffer, this is going to help for you to fight those allergic reactions. Okay, awesome, awesome. Now, I want to share our viewer spotlight. I'm going to hand that off to you. Thank you so much. And every week we share some good positive feedback from our viewers. And this is from What the Fluff. Always learning something new. Thank you for working so hard, doing so much research in order to bring us valuable information for free. You rock. Well, thank you so much, What the Fluff. <laughs> that is so kind of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy that you appreciate, you know, everything that we do here. It's not just me, it's my whole team, everything that we do to so get that content out to you, to educate you, to empower you so that you become a healthier person and hopefully share it with your friends as well. Talking about sharing, let's share with like, let's share with 10, 15 people right now. Thank you for sharing with all of your friends when I do go live because it's amazing that, you know, we can share this great health information. It's so great to have you all here today. Let's talk now about that food detox recipe that I've been talking about, which is amazing. It's something that I have posted in the past, but I wanted to revisit it. And one of the things that's amazing about doing salt detox is that we have a lot of acupuncture points on the feet. So all of our organ systems are going into those feet and that's why by drawing those toxins out through the feet, that's one of the things that we can definitely do. Thank you for being here today. Please follow. So thanks to all my new followers, please follow. And if you're here for the first time, you don't want to miss any of this fantastic natural health information. We've got the recipe coming up on how to mix this up. I'm going to mix it up really quickly. Hey, we didn't name this guy yet, did we? I don't think we named him. I don't know. We're going to have jokes behind the scenes. We don't have a name for him yet, but that's okay. Okay, so what we're doing with the salt, so remember all those acupuncture points in the feet, and that's why salt and doing foot detox is so incredible. So what I've got here is a bowl, and we've opened up the herbal medicine. So in the Vita Detox, again, from our great sponsors at Vita Tree, we thank them, we thank them. This is a full body detox, and what we've done is we've opened up all those capsules, discarded the capsules, and opened up all the capsules of one entire bottle, and put that back into the bottle so that we've got that, okay? So you're gonna mix that bottle of that detox powder now into a container. I'm just gonna mix it into the bowl so that you can see it, as well as some salt. So Himalayan salt, eh, not the best, maybe a sea salt. Um, this is a special bath salt that I have that is, you know, loaded with minerals and crystals and things, and which is amazing. So you're going to do a third of a cup of that salt and sort of just mix that in together. Then I would actually put this mixture back into my detox bottle. And then what you're doing is you're just taking a quarter of a cup of this detox mixture Okay, so you're gonna put that into your basin. So I'm not gonna measure, but a quarter of a cup of that into my basin. And now you've got more for probably another two more foot detoxes. Okay, then you're gonna add some apple cider vinegar into here, and it's just a half a cup of the apple cider vinegar into your basin. That's gonna to help to draw those toxins out as well. Anybody who's watched the show before, you know that I don't like to measure anything. Same in, in my baking, which, most times works, I go on intuition, most times works, but ask my kids, sometimes not so much. Okay, and then you're gonna add some hot water. So about 10 cups of hot, as hot as you can stand it, water. And you're putting that into your basin and enough to cover your feet. So there we go. And that's going to have now, all the herbal medicines in this formulation is gonna have that drawing effect on those toxins in your body. Then I would put my feet, I'm not gonna do it now, but I would put my feet in here for 45 minutes. So you're gonna soak for 45 minutes. It is amazing at drawing toxins out. And you know, for people who have concerns about toxicity and certain things, pulling those toxins out through the feet is amazing. Sorry, I'm moving too fast for you guys. Um, because remember in Eastern medicine, there, this is something that, you know, doing foot detoxes is, is a protocol that's been prescribed for centuries and centuries Centuries and, and traditional Chinese medicine practitioners believe that those all of those meridians that are running through the feet from all of the qi, the energy through the you know acupuncture channels, that has the effect because they all all of those organs are going to end up in the feet. If you can look, I don't know if you can you see that on the camera. I hope you can see it. Like all of those acupuncture points that have now ended up in the feet. So imagine all of your organ systems are now being treated through the feet and pulling those foot baths 
are amazing for pulling those toxins out. Okay, so let's go now to that recipe really quickly so that you've got it, so you can screenshot it. Here we go. So basically, you're gonna open up a full bottle of that detox into, back into the, the container. You're gonna use a third of a cup of that sea salt, a half a cup of apple cider vinegar, put that into your basin, and then you're gonna add in your hot water, as hot as you can stand, because the heat has a drying effect. This is actually great for migraine headaches as well. If you happen to have a migraine, do this. It'll get rid of the headache immediately. I mean, it's incredible. So it's a, the effect of the drying of the toxins plus, and hey, maybe that's something we'll talk about next week as well. Migraines. We're going to come back to that and maybe we can revisit this next week as well. Okay, so there you go. Thank you for tuning in today. Okay, I know some people are asking questions. We will have those questions coming up. Hello in the, in the Philippines. Hello in California. Nice to see you. Thank you. And it's great to have you all here today. Okay, we're going to the beauty set. Is everybody ready? I know so many of you have been waiting for this. We're talking about face taping for those crow's feet, which is a concern for some people. For some people, hey, it doesn't matter. Uh, wrinkles, fine lines and wrinkles, they're beautiful as well. And I always say the crow's feet, it, it means that you've been smiling a lot. So hey, if you've got them, congratulations, you know, that you've been enjoying your life and you've got, you know, the evidence on your face. So we don't need to be overly concerned about these things. But hey, for some people who want to slow down those fine lines and wrinkles, here's a great natural technique that you can use that doesn't involve any types of, you know, toxins or things that are being injected. This is fantastic because you can do this in your home. It's very inexpensive. You just have to purchase the kinesiology tape. Always do a patch test to make sure on your skin that you're not reacting to the adhesive. And it's something that is amazing. You can also use the medical tape, the, the one that's a little bit opaque. Um, you don't have to use the strong, strong one for this area because we know that the, the area around the eyes is very delicate. So depending on your skin type as well, I have very fine you know, and delicate skin, but at the same time, I find that the K-tape is just fine for my skin, okay? So you've done your patch test and you are going to now cut little strips of your kinesiology tape. And what we're working on, and let's look at the musculature around the eyes, it's called the orbicularis oculi muscle. So that's the muscle that surrounds the eyes. That's what allows us to make, you know, those expressions of smiling, as well as if you're crying, unfortunately, if you're frowning, you're going to be, you know, and your eyes are going to express that with that muscle, the orbicularis oculi. Okay, so that's what we want to sort of now tame the motion of that muscle. And all you're going to do now is apply to clean skin and ideally, preferably at nighttime, you are going to apply to that area. If you do have fine lines and wrinkles, you're gently just, you know, sort of smoothing out the skin. So I'm just kind of stretching it very lightly and basically applying the tape to that area. And then you just pat it down gently and then you go to sleep. And this actually tells the muscles underneath to relax. It's like a reflex that happens when something is touching the skin and then you'll notice over time what this does because it really does shut down much like injections that shut down the, the muscle contractions like Botox and things. This will do it as well but in a much more natural way. So then I would do the other side as well and if you do face taping please put a two in the comments. Thank you and Andrianne. Thank you for the follow. It's nice to have you here. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much for being here and Sunshine thank you for sharing. That's so nice of you. Amazing that you're all here today and thank you for sharing. Okay so if I were to do the other side again we're just stretching the skin very gently and applying the tape on top of oops that crow's feet area there you go that's it isn't that easy okay everybody yes jennifer yes for the face taping amazing amazing glad that you are able to do this for yourselves and the, i know we get the question all the time where does this come from you can purchase this online often in the pharmacy kinesiology tape is actually meant for athletes and taping knees and shoulders and hips and things. Um, but you can use it for your face taping for your beauty routine as well. Okay, everybody love that? Here we go. Let's go to quiz question number three. If you're just tuning in, this is a very interactive show. It's so great to have you all here today. Did I mess everything up? No, I'm good. Okay, here we go. <laughs> quiz question number three. I hope you're paying attention. How much salt is added to one liter of water to make your Soleil water? Everybody put your answers in the comments right now. So great to have you all here. This is quiz question number three. You have the ability to win a prize this week. We are playing for our Fat Factors 
And you've got about 20 seconds left. Just take a stab at it. Uh, you've got to be specific, everybody. Don't just give me a number. Okay, how much salt is added to one liter of that water to make our soleil water? If you don't know what soleil water is, maybe we'll grab it really quickly. And if you're just tuning in, and one second left. Okay, there we go. We are out of time. So to make your soleil water, thank you. You are adding, whoever put two teaspoons. Yes, good job. Two tablespoons, Bill, would be a lot. That would be a lot. You breezy girl, that would be a lot. Three tablespoons, Woo, that would be very salty. Okay, two teaspoons in your liter of water to make your soleil water. If you don't know what soleil water is, you're just tuning in now. We can come back to the recipe and why this is so important. If you have that question, just put yes, please come back to it and we will do that. So there you go. And this is so great to have you all here today. Now, if you did have questions, so I'd like to take a few minutes to answer questions. I know they came up during the show. I wasn't able to get at all of them, but please put your question in the comment section and hopefully I will be able to, okay, tabs and user 9411. Okay, we will come back to Soleil Water. Maybe we can pull that up. So Soleil Water is something that helps with your proper hydration. Thank you for sharing today's live, guys. It was so great to have you all here and, and that you're tuning in. So Soleil Water is all about helping with muscle recovery and function, helps with proper digestion, and it is salt water. So you're making a high concentration of salt and you're adding just a teaspoon of that of your Soleil Water to your drinking water every time that you drink and we saw the benefits there so it's two teaspoons of your sea salt you're adding that to your liter and I like to use the uh, always use don't use plastic always use that glass jar that mason jar one liter jar easy to find you're going to mix that up and every time you drink you're just going to add a teaspoon of that to your drinking water so there you have it maybe we'll come to the benefits really quickly again the benefits of that soleil water great for muscle cramping great for athletes or non-athletes when you're working out when you're perspiring great for digestion helps with detox and your ph balance so that's really important as well balance your, your blood sugar because of those minerals which is amazing also helps with bone health and because of the extra minerals helps to boost your energy levels and is a natural antihistamine so helping in that allergy season right now for a lot of people it's ragweed season and yeah that is going to be amazing tabs you want to see the recipe one more time can we pull up the recipe one more time thank you here we go thank you for tuning in everyone i know that there's a ton of new people here today thanks for all the follows and the new New followers that are here there we go tabs you got it okay two teaspoons of the, your salt and add that to a liter of water then you're just using a teaspoon of that every time you drink okay awesome awesome now other questions this is oh you're so welcome thank you for tuning in amazing do you add the two teaspoons to bottle of water which already has sodium yes even if you're even if you're so for instance my drinking water already has minerals in it this is adding more minerals and then i'm taking those minerals to add into my already mineralized water if that makes sense you're adding more because we need more. Um, okay, hello in, from Italy, Gigi. Thank you, I'm glad that you tuned in today and that you caught the show, it's amazing to see you. So every Tuesday at this time, we have the Dr. Janine Show. So please make sure if you're just tuning in now that you check out our previous episodes, but also tune in next week at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do it every week, different topics every week. And if you're just tuning in today, we talked about how to maximize that fat burn. Where's my, my Mr. Fat? We also made a foot detox recipe, which we can come down to, maybe you can see it down here on the floor, how to draw those toxins out of the feet. Remember, there's so many different acupuncture points on the feet and pulling those toxins out of the feet. So I guess I could put that guy in there to drain, to help to detox his feet, which is amazing. And we talked about fat burning. We also talked about which position, but also which direction should we be sleeping in to maximize our sleep. We talked about leptin resistance. We talked about, you know, getting off that extra body weight, that extra fat and for fat loss as that's related to your hormones and your leptin resistance. So that's really important as well. Okay, there's a few questions coming in. Let me see. Yeah. Can you use Celtic salt for which one? For the foot or for the... Yes, you could, but the only issue that I have with Celtic salt, and you'll have to stay tuned for my post coming up on the Celtic salt, is that it's been proven to have microplastics in the research. 
and why, okay, why this cell, again, that's going to be coming up in my post because it has a ton of minerals and it's, com it's coming from an ancient mineral deposit in Utah um, from sea, originally from seawater, so it has the right blend of all of the minerals that we need from Utah, yeah. So that's why I go with that one, and it's low in mic microplastics, which has been found in the research. There's a lot of research happening on microplastics. If you don't know what that is, I've got videos on that. Please check it out. Microplastics are endocrine disruptors. They mess up and cause even fat gain because our body actually holds on to excess water and fat to help to protect us from toxins. So that's why doing these types of detoxes, whether it's a foot detox or ingesting, you know, the detox herbal medicines, drying those toxins out is going to be really important, especially if you're struggling to lose that weight and to get your hormones under control. So that's really, really important. And that's why microplastics are a huge problem right now. There's a lot of, you know, looking at, um, looking at that. Okay, more questions. Yes, heavy metal detox. Um, what about heavy metals in mined salts? There are a lot of heavy metals as well, yes, in Celtic as well as Himalayan. So that's why, yeah, no, no, I don't like the Himalayan. I used to use it all the time thinking it was healthy, but mm, no. Uh, Himalayan salt is great for salt lamps, great for salt caves. Uh, if you've ever done a salt cave experience before, which is great, but not so much for ingesting it, okay? Um, all right. It, is there, how do you start the foot detox? Uh, princesses, 37, yeah, so you can do this, you know, monthly as your foot detox. I like to do, in general, full body detox in terms of ingesting uh, those herbal medicines once per season. So doing it, ideally, I mean, the gold standard way that I say to do that detox is to also do the parasite cleansing, candida cleansing as part of the protocol, and you're on the detox for two solid months. So every day, I'm doing it right now as part of my fall detox, Every day you're taking that Vita Detox for two months, then you take a month off of that, and then you go back because it's the next season, if that makes sense, just to stay ahead of that toxicity that we have in our environment. And it's so funny because my, my son, eldest son asked me the other day, well, Mama, don't our organs, you know, I thought our organs are, because that's what people say, right? That's what people have learned in mainstream medicine is that our organs, our liver, our kidneys, they're always detoxing for us. Yeah, they are, but they can't, they never got the upgrade for all of those environmental toxins, like thousands and thousands of environmental toxins that we have on a daily basis that we have to counteract and we've got to detox. So that's really important. That's why I love the foot bath that we talked about if you're just tuning in now, doing that full body detox through the foot bath, but also ingesting those herbal medicines. Lemon and water, Dancer 15, yes, amazing. Love lemon and water. It's great for your liver health, which is great. It's one of the things that we talked about with liver detox. Okay, so thank you so much to everybody who tuned in today. We talked all about fat loss and leptin resistance. Now our next show, we're going to be talking about cellulite. We'll also talk about migraine headaches. We're going to revisit probably our foot bath as well and some other tips and tricks for those headaches, which is amazing. And thank you so much. I always endeavor to teach you and to empower you over the healing of your own body, mind, and spirit. It was so great to have you all here today, and we'll see you next time. See you next week.